Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time, and his lovely, gorgeous wife, Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. This Ugh. is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, friend, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson and available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notify bell next to it if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to us in the audio realm, try using CastBox. Yes, yes. we are available on the iOS podcast app, Stitcher, all sorts of those other places. Pretty much anywhere. But uh, we ask that you try out CastBox. We have a terrific partnership with them. Uh, you can download it for free on iOS. It's a good app. Nay, a great app. Or Android. Uh, and then hit up uh, the Going In Raw podcast. Hit subscribe. And believe it or not, that's actually a great way to help support really Going is. In Raw. It's completely free and it's completely easy. Another great way to support Going In Raw is by hitting us up on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. You don't like watching ads going in Going In Raw? Then uh, kick in a dollar a month and you get the show ad free right there on the Patreon. Uh, it's a fantastic way. You'd be surprised. A lot of page, a lot of people are like, ah, Patreon, what, what good is my $1 going to do? It actually does quite a bit. It adds up. It adds up. It all adds up. Exactly. Uh, and then we're also available at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash going in around. We got a great selection of shirts there. And at the Friendo Market, we still got plenty of the Chicago sticker packs. And we've got a handful. Do you have graphic? Probably. Let's take a look here. Do I have there's graphic? a lot going on there. What's this right here? There's Yeah, there it is. So look, there's our banner. There's graphic. <laughs> there, there's, look, we look so goofy right there. Anyways. Yeah. So we got we got a, no extra larges left, but I think we've got a plethora of larges. I think we have like eh, I think we have everything but XL. We might be low on two XL too. Could be. I don't know. Could but anyways, be. check it out. I've made sure to like remove the sizes that are sold out. Good at Friendo Market. And as always, I get notifications on my phone whenever anybody purchases something from Friendo Market. So take a look if you like something and you order it during this show. We're like QVC. If you order it within the next fifty five minutes. We'll read your name on the air. They well, don't actually, do that they at actually QVC. Take calls. Yeah, they should take calls from people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and live on air? Yeah. Oh, we should start doing that. You buy something on Friendo Market, then Skype in. Hey, Stephen Larson. I just bought one of your Chicago packs. <laughs> cool, man. That's awesome. What's your name? The devil. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Man, I've been catching so much shit today, Larson. The Kyle O'Reilly shoulder gate incident is blowing me up right now. It's blowing up. Y'all are a bunch of assholes, by the way. I didn't... The funny thing is... You thought of all the potential fallout of that interview. That, that didn't even cross your mind in the least. I huh? didn't even realize... I'll be honest. When I saw it the first time, I was like, oh, he put his, he put his arm on, on Kyle's shoulder. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be for that bit where, where he says, oh, a real Larry King over here. Yeah. And you were just doing that for, for a moment. Yeah. Before continuing on. Yeah. And it just stayed there. It lingered. I'll, I'll be honest, man. I was instantly... So I was totally fangirling on the inside, obviously, right? But I was... Totally and completely at comfort. Bay might not have been with me, but I was totally and complete and completely in comfort at comfort with those guys. Yeah. So I felt totally natural. I didn't even know that I did that until people started bringing it up, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess I did." So uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think it's funny. I think I'm, I'm I, I can laugh at myself very easily, but uh, yeah, that's been that's been my morning. There's like one particular still shot of Kyle Riley's face, and he just looks absolutely miserable. I'm hoping it's not because my hand was on his my my, my hand was on his shoulder. Maybe it was. What I don't can, know. What I don't you know. Do you know? You live and learn, I guess. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's gonna be my new thing. I'm just gonna start putting my my arm on everybody's shoulder now. That's, that's not a good idea. Anyways, somebody had a good somebody had a good a uh, a good uh, theory about why Thera Thabata is a back away uh, is a step away. Because he doesn't, he doesn't want your arm on his shoulder. Because he didn't exactly. do that to me. Yeah. Just to you. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, it did make me laugh. The response to the interview so far has been uh, fantastic. Though. Yeah. Um, same Speed with the interview, interview that went today. Cassius Ono. Yeah. Um, great response so far. And, and uh, uh, Ringside News. Yeah, that's right. Uh, actually had it on their front page. Yeah. They did a thing. where does that, So, does that make us like we've been... We've been linked to now. Does that make us kind of journalists 
in a respect. Uh, kind of. We went out. I and, guess in this sense, there was no uh, regurgitation on yeah, our part. It was all OG. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Usually we regurgitate and then talk about it. So for a short spell, we were journalists. You could wear your journalism cap. My little hat with the little card. Don't they have like a card yeah. in it? Their, is that their credentials? Where they Maybe. used to put their credentials? Put them up in their, the band of their hat. Yeah, now Maybe. it's a lanyard, I think. Yeah. But back then, you put it in your cap. Yeah. Oh, let him in. He's press. Yeah, because no. it just said this piece of paper said press on it. <laughs> right. All and they did. realized everybody just That's started doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Cassius Ono interview is up right now. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, these were really, really quick. I don't like that. I always feel like I'm inconveniencing people. Evidently, not when I have my arm in their shoulder, but uh, when I'm just simply taking up their time. So, it's like it's six minutes, but man, it's six minutes of really good stuff. Cassius Ono, like, it, as soon as you start talking to him, you feel like you're his best friend. Yeah, he seemed like a really good guy. He's like the, the warmest, kindest, gentlest. You know, dude who doles out nasty elbows and kicks. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Tomorrow, we've got uh, a really good interview with Shayna Baszler. Um, this one, there's no arm on shoulder and it's well lit. Because the Cassius Ono one, so he, again, he wasn't like, he wasn't like on the official list of people to be there. He yeah, just yeah. was walking by and I said, hey, Chris. Because like I'm on the inside apparently. I said, Chris. <laughs> I said, hey, man. And he said, hey, how's it going? I'm like. I'm like, hey, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm like, would you be, can you give me a quick interview real quick? And he was like, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and uh, and I didn't realize, but I was like in the li- like the least optimal place for lighting at that point. So I like jacked up the contrast or jacked up the- You stylized it. Yeah, I stylized it. The skip bleach. That's what you got to do. If anybody knows about filmmaking technique. Yeah. So yeah, that one was a, that was a good one. Uh, and then, yeah, the Shana one was really good, too. I listened so. to the bit where you were talking about the T-shirts. Uh, which bit about what now? Where you you asked her about, is it cool to wear T-shirts of bands that you might not really know much about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have a, oh, man. So I watched that bit. Yeah. Hey, she she kind of, she pretty much sided with you, though, on yeah, it. Yeah, because that's the correct side. In the side. end, yeah. You know. I've See, here's the thing. I've never really, I've never really thought that it was okay to totally like i haven't i I, guess what i own a slayer shirt i don't wear it number one this is really ill-fitting but i also wouldn't feel comfortable i'm i'm with you on it but i do feel like you go way too far how you expect people to know each and everything about a band no i don't expect that i was giving you a hard time about the tool stuff oh no 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 well i thought we were in kayfabe Oh, sorry. See, kayfabe it works. Yeah. You can't you can't dial back and say no. I'm actually a reasonable person. That doesn't work. We're supposed to be unreasonable, unreasonable. All right. Then and the cor- and the correct answer is in the middle. If you don't know the entire time, like each member of the band has been in the band, right? The exact years to the day. Then <laughs> exactly. You're not a real fan. No business going to Hot Topic and buying that tool shirt. No. And in fact, you can't even buy it from Hot Topic. You have to buy it from Maynard himself. Yeah. Out of the trunk of his car. <laughs> Exactly. And if you buy enough shirts, she'll toss in a bottle of wine yeah. because he makes wine as well. So Shayna, she did. She put an end to that debate. Um, and she also divulged which brand she would prefer to be on. There you go. Um, so check that interview out that's tomorrow. That's first thing in the morning, right? That's that's a lot of fun. Uh, that's going up at eight. 8. Oh, I better reschedule that match then. 8. Well, we can do it opposites. We can do that one at at five Pacific, eight Eastern, and then we can do the Saturday show at eight. eight. Yeah, right, we can. Right, that's right. fine. We can do that. I mean, it's, it's not a big, channel. It's not, it's not a huge deal. I can just go into YouTube and reschedule it. it takes we'll two talk seconds. about it afterwards. It really doesn't matter. Uh, let's let's take some uh, super chats here real quick, and we'll get to the news. Alto got his TLC ticket, sitting second row behind announcers. Cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh man, can we send you out a shirt or something? Yeah. We, in the end, we decided not to go after TLC tickets because uh, it, it's oh, that's good. Um, it's not good. It I'm, just it just makes more sense for us from a business standpoint to yeah. stay here, sit in that room back there, uh, drink a couple beers, yeah, watch TLC with everybody else. Because we we also kind of feel that uh, chances are because they're going to be heavily on the West Coast in the next couple of months. There's going to be a Raw or SmackDown at Sacramento, or at least a house show, or, or at least something. a house show. And we'll go to that, and we'll get our we'll get our fill of live wrestling there. I pr- I kind of prefer that over a pay per view, anyways. Um, I think a pr- paper. Uh, here's the thing. For me, it would be SmackDown. Yeah. Then pay per view. Then no SmackDown house show pay per view than Raw. SmackDown uh, TV tops. or house show? What's top? Top SmackDown TV. SmackDown TV then SmackDown house show. 
and it will either house show. Okay. Preferably SmackDown because I like the roster more, but it's sure. just a house show because there's no commercials. There's yeah, not, okay. there's not yeah. a whole lot of downtime. Raw is three hours. There's a ton of downtime. Yeah. Yeah, for the, all the commercial breaks. Yeah, so no, I feel like I on agree. SmackDown, you also not only get SmackDown, you get 205 Live as well. You know what's odd, though? And maybe Mixed Match that Challenge, in, if that's that still in, going on. That entire list, the very rock bottom for me is WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. That's the longest one. It's a long show. It's a WrestleMania. <clears throat> I'm in the Discord right now. You can join the Discord. Well, again, $1 a month on $1. Patreon gets you access to the Discord. Uh, There's all sorts of Kyle O'Reilly stuff. There. I'm putting Adam Darwin and uh, Fat Bastard Champ Alex Foster. You guys are now officially on my shit list. Congratulations. And whoever made a goddamn emoji of my arm on Kyle O'Reilly's shoulder, I don't know if Jimmy Thomas made this, but he put it in there. You're, fi- you're fired. You're out. You're on my shit list. That's successful. I was going to send all three of these guys Christmas cards. Now you're not getting a Christmas card. I'll send you guys Christmas cards. You're not sending anybody. Yon Halili. I was going to propose to my lady today. Remember that I'm alone and don't have a lady. Just kidding. It's Friday and I'm happy. It's the weekend. Here's five bucks. So does he have a lady or no? I don't know the the the, the JK if that refers to everything or just part of it. Yeah, I don't. Then I remember I'm alone and don't have a lady. JK, are, do, are, are you getting some or no? You getting some action or no? This is all very confusing. I'm very confused. What's next? Dylan, um, what should main event Super Showdown and what will? Well, Universal Championship. Is not that, on the line. That's not, okay. It's going to be Undertaker uh, Triple H. Oh, you th- no, 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 no. What's the uh, mm-hmm. what, Dogs of War? Right? Isn't that the thing? It's is Braun Shield versus Dogs of War. Yeah, that's main event. No, Undertaker Triple H is going to be. Oh, I'll I'll bet you a six pack on that one. Okay, okay, okay. Of the finest American beer. <laughs> <laughs> the real retardisty any friendos going to the October 2nd Smackdown in Portland. Hit us up on Twitter. We'll retweet it and yes. put a call out. Uh, Alto, do Taker reacting to you impersonating Taker? Hello, is this Steve here? Uh, yes, it is. Why, number one, why is your arm on my shoulder? I thought we were calling each other on the phone. Depths of hell, I'll put you down like a dog. Stop doing me. William Geo, listening to y'all while trying to get some work done since tomorrow's homecoming at my college. They have that for college? Yeah. Like a dance? I don't think it's a dance. I think it's oh. still like a huge football thing. Oh, though. okay. When I think homecoming. Cause I don't know. No, in high school is a thing. But yeah, I, I got my, my steps are in high school now, so homecoming's a thing. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, Jose Alaguna, Steve here, a.k.a. NWO Larry King. See, that's why I don't think Kyle O'Reilly was upset with the shoulder thing because he had a really funny burn on me. Mm -hmm. He called me NWO Larry King. Mm -hmm. So I think he was okay with it. Yeah. My favorite part, though, was when you said that you always level your gap to 110. You did this. (laughs) Pay attention to his reaction. That's great. I didn't notice that. That's funny. Chaluminati, baby. Uh, I don't care what Adam Cole says. Larson is undisputed. Well, Chaluminati, baby, he can't really. He's not part of the undisputed. You got to induct somebody from within. Yeah, Steve's right. I, I, though I appreciate the sentiment. Shane Anonymous, hey, friendos. Hope everyone's having a great day. It's uh, going all right so far. Yeah, it's going it's okay. Yeah, it's good. Uh, another one from Dylan. Great Cassius Ono interview, Steve. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, he, Robert, made it, he made it very easy. Yeah, me. yeah. Robert Lawback. Any friendos at Raw House Show in Cologne, November 7th? Um, what now? Raw House Show, Cologne, Germany. Again, tweet at us. Yes. Let's hop into the news, and we'll get to the rest of these stupid chats in a bit. Where's the news? It's right here. Is this right here? Oh, cool. HBK, yeah. is that lead story? Yeah, it's lead story, man. He's coming back. Think I'm cute. I'm coming back. I cut my hair, so I look like an asshole. He doesn't look like an asshole. He's going he's gonna to be goofy in his ring gear with that haircut of his. Mm-hmm. He should have, like, I don't know. He made it so insurance salesman. He should have, like, at least buzzed the sides a bit, you know, made it a little no, contemporary. I know. No, I know. But all they did was just chop it off and clean it up in the back. Yeah. And it's like, and it's all combed back. Not a whole lot going on up here. No, he should just cut it all off, like Triple H. So uh, that's cool. So what's the deal? Like Crown Jewel? Is that yeah, what's going apparently. On? So, uh, back on Wednesday, Cage Side Seats reported that uh, Dave Meltzer mentioned on Wrestling Observer Radio that there were plans for Shawn Michaels to return to the ring, likely taking part in a tag match pitting himself and Triple H mm-hmm. against. Glenn Jacobs, mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, and Mark Calloway, The Undertaker. Mm-hmm. But then he followed that up in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter saying, quote, Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement match has been confirmed for the November 2nd Saudi Arabia show called Crown Jewel, 
Um, Michaels and Triple H will face Undertaker and Kane on a show that will be headlined by Roman Reigns defending the Universal title in a three-way against Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Sources in WWE confirm that Super Showdown will set up the angle to lead to the tag match with Michaels coming out of retirement after eight years in Saudi Arabia. Michaels, for years, had been adamant that he wouldn't come out of retirement, but the money offer was likely too much to turn down. <coughs> Jeez, wow, that's impressive. Uh, PW Insider has since confirmed that HBK will be in attendance at the October 1st episode of Raw, which is the go-home show for Super Showdown, and that it, quote, looks to be setting up Michael's return to the ring. Mm. Now, not long ago, I believe we covered it, uh, HBK said that uh, based on the work he's been doing at NXT of late, um, he's, he, he kind of had the itch again yeah. to perform, to wrestle. Mm -hmm. um, but he was he, he pumping the brakes on the idea that he's going to be able to get back in the ring after eight years off. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to be, what, 50 around there now? Yeah. Maybe oh, yeah. over. Yeah. Um, and be able to perform at the same level he used to. Yeah. So he said the most likely scenario be a tag match with Hunter. Mm -hmm. And that seems like exactly what we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which now, is exciting. Yeah. The question, the question, of course, would be similar to... And I know that this is a bit different, but similar to his return in 2002, 2003, uh, he took it. He, he wanted to do that first match and just see where he was at. Yeah. I wonder if this could be similar. Obviously, he wouldn't be coming back for another five-year full-time no, run. That's no. that's obvious. Yeah. However, uh, I wonder if this, 53. If this situation, um, if he's happy, and I think it'd, it'd be two things. Number one, if he's happy with his performance. Uh, and number two, the money thing, and it's it's interesting to me that the money thing was a deciding. Well, well I think that's Belser speculation as much as any. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah, fair enough, of. fair enough, fair enough. Um, but, I mean, if, if if you have a, a a check with six zeros at the end of it, it's gonna be hard to turn that down. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, if if his performance is what he wants it to be or exceeds expectations. Um, cause he's, he's a guy, especially since his second run anyways, who always seemed to be, you know, keep his expectations sort of in check. Mm -hmm. At least when you, you know, hear him talk about stuff after he, you know, went through his, his, his career and, and his retirement and had to deal with all the personal issues that he went through and found, I guess, God, and then got really level headed, um, for his second run, which was amazing, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it always seemed to be, well, is the performance good? If the performance is good, I, I would suspect that he would be, you know, interested in... Potentially in, up for additional matches. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. brings us to the inevitable power ranking. Power, 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 power rank. Power rank. Power, 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 power rank. Who, power who rank. in WWE do we want to see face off against HBK? 10 HBK dream matches. Number 10. Triple H. We've seen that countless times. Yeah. But where's yeah. the new? Give me something new. Well, it would be new because they haven't been they haven't done it forever. That's why he's at number ten because for one thing, you know we're gonna get it. Well, that's not necessarily true because they have done a lot and uh, new Shawn Michaels. Number one, they ain't gonna be ten matches. That's why this is at number no, ten. No, I know. That's why that's we're lucky to get 10. three, maybe. Yeah, exactly. But who's uh, to say we're gonna? Just because this is just ten potential opponents. Does not ten matches. All right, number nine would be Roman Reigns. He's the top dog in the WWE right now. Uh, that one's dope. Um, so it, it, you know, Roman Reigns, and on top of that, Roman Reigns can put together some good matches. He can with right opponent. Really, yeah, with really good matches. Number eight, Andrade Cien Almas. That's good. That's like probably one of the least likely ones to happen. I know, but it'd be a stellar match. Unless, hey, if he keeps on uh, impressing Vince, John, there's this great guy named. Cien Almas. Cien Almas. You know, Cien stands for 100. <laughs> He's 100. That's the back of his shirt says. Yeah. Uh, number seven. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you you got it exactly right right here. He's filling in from one to where we're at. So seven and six are question marks, huh? Yeah, who else in SmackDown? Well, now we got to go down to NXT. Well, number seven, how about Adam Cole Bebe? Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, that's got to be number six. No, oh, okay. I'd actually put that at number five, to be honest yeah, with no, you. Yeah, no, me I'd too. I'd flip those ones out. Because there are shades in his in his yes. persona yes. Of, of Shawn Michaels. Obviously, he's a strong advocate of the super kick. Yes. Which Shawn Michaels brought, you know, sort of to prominence yes. during his day. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so that's at number five. We got at number seven. Who's number seven? Seven. 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 What about uh, Drew McIntyre? 
Shawn Michaels always had the ability to, to to face off against larger opponents and make the matches feel believable. Oh, I like this better. Pete Dunne. Pete oh, Dunne. yeah. Because here's the thing about Pete Dunne is that, you know, with, besides having to sell the X-Plex stuff, um, the map base stuff, yes, yes, that would be, be really fun that'll to see like he did against Kurt Angle yes. try to counter that stuff. Fair enough. So number six. seven, Pete Dunne. Seven or six, Finn Balor. Uh, Triple H guy versus Triple H guy. Exactly. Yeah. Five, Adam Cole Bebe. I already mentioned him. Four, Johnny Gargano. Uh, that's a dude that HBK literally said, you know, working with guys like this, I would love to have a match with guys like this. Yeah. Johnny Gargano. Three. So that'd be fun. Seth Rollins. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't put – I would actually take Finn Balor off there and put Ciampa on there because that was kind of – didn't we just talk about that yeah. question the other day? Yeah. Yeah, put Ciampa on there. I like that answer. Oh, that's a good answer. Three, Seth Rollins. Two, Daniel Bryan, former student. Oh, yeah. And one. AJ Styles. AJ Styles. Of course it'd be AJ Styles. Yeah, it'd be AJ Styles. There'd be 90-plus years between the two of them in age. Uh, I think one and two could totally be interchangeable. AJ Styles oh, totally, and Daniel totally, Bryan. Totally. I mean, know? the match quality would be uh, roughly the same regardless of the opponent. But with Daniel Bryan, you have the added storyline of Daniel Bryan facing off against one of his former teachers. I would. So me, personally, I might even... Would put Daniel Bryan number one only because the the look on Daniel Bryan's face during the entire feud, if it was a you know whatever yeah, the yeah. entire program, would I don't think he'd be able to take the smile off his face. Oh, it'd be hard. And that's like infectious smile. Daniel Bryan his, is my his favorite. Might be best Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, Bryan exactly. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, those are all good answers. Great list. Uh, a couple other people here in chat uh, said Joe. Mm. Uh, that's a good one. Velveteen Dream. That would be good. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, Jorge Salas says Diesel. Well, I mean, he just won the belt. He did just win it. To, does he still have that? I don't know. We should look into that. So, right. anyways, yeah, no, those are all good answers. All great answers. Yeah. I mean, really, anytime HBK gets in the ring with like top of the line talent, it's going to be good. And basically, you mentioned this the other day. Basically, everybody in WWE, given the right story, given the right creative. Oh, can be top of the line oh, talent. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like they all have the physical tools. Yeah, they all have charisma. They all have gumption. They all have gumption. They all have the ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's just putting the ingredients together. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Anyways, let's uh, talk about Sasha Banks. This is sad. This is a bummer. Yeah. Breaking news this morning from WWE: Sasha Banks is hurt, mm. and she is out of the mixed match challenge. Mickey James will take her place. The team. With Bobby Lashley. Um, no word yet on the nature of the injury, but of course this comes just a couple days after it was announced that Alexa Bliss was out, replaced by Ember Moon, um, teaming with Braun Strowman. And apparently Alexa has some sort of arm <coughs> ailment, yeah. sort of injury. Yeah. Um, this is a bummer. Uh, pardon me... Do you think they can just be pulling some of the woman out in preparation for evolution? I I thought that maybe it was possible that this wasn't actually an injury, like an actual injury. Mm -hmm. um, well, for one thing, WWE has no problem, you know, doing medical reports and injury updates yeah, they'll, in, they'll, in kayfabe. They'll you kayfabe know? them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I don't know, man. Like... She wrestled two weeks ago against uh, Dana Brooke. Is that right? Uh, this week was Bailey. The week before that, seventh. The seventh is her last televised match. The seventh, three yeah. weeks or two weeks ago. Okay, but then she wrestled the the following weekend in the house shows. Okay, but I don't think she's wrestled since. So I mean, there's there's the possibility that it is. Um, there's the, I mean, there's the possibility. It could. Yeah, yeah. She could be hurt. You know, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if it's a situation like Alexa. I remember if it was a newsletter or somewhere else that said that she was dealing with some numbness in her arm mm -hmm. um, and that she was cleared for kind of like light mm -hmm. activity. Yeah. Not, you know, like contact. So she can be involved in angles and such on TV, maybe take a bump here or there. Yeah. But she can't actually, she, she's not up for a match yet. Yeah. And I wonder if maybe it's something, maybe something similar with Sasha where it could be an injury. Um, nothing, potentially nothing serious. It's kind of a nagging injury. Right, yeah. And they, yeah. they, they just think, all right, well, we want her to be involved at Evolution since she's a huge part of everything they've been doing the last three years or so. 
Um, we don't want to risk her further injuring herself, so we'll put her on a limited schedule, take her out of Mixed Match Challenge. Speculation, though. Yeah. Um, because Mixed Match Challenge seems to be... Like, I'm not going to say it's, like, not important to the WWE because they're probably making a good chunk of change from Facebook mm-hmm. of it. And I think if I read, I mean, at least for the first episode of it, <coughs> the numbers, I think, were pretty good on the first yeah. episode of it. Um, I think. Um, so, yeah, that, that's possible. Uh, Evolution's a much bigger deal, I would oh, think, yes. than Mixed Match Challenge. Um, somebody on uh, Twitter today um, said, you know, with Sasha injured, does this mean that the women tag titles are, are off the table? I don't think they would... I don't think Sasha is, is like, you know, a necessity to have them debut a whole new division. No. Um, but that being said, you know, yeah, th- this maybe it's probably a more, it's just being, them being cautious, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's like they, their schedule is already rigorous, you know, add one more match of bumps to it. And granted, I know the mixed match challenge is, is a lot of silliness, but still, you know. Yeah. There's still bumps being taken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, next story that I'm sure you're excited about, Steve. Mm-hmm. WWE and Impact. Oh, man, we're talking full invasion storyline, talent swaps. We're talking a WWE co-branded w- Bound for Glory presented by Mixed Match Challenge. That's what this is going to be. Okay, so Austin Aries champion, Roman Reigns champion. Is that the match we're going to get? No. At WrestleMania in the main no. event? No. What's going on here, man? PW Insider broke the story Tuesday. There was some sort of meeting between WWE and Impact. Well, this is what they had to say. Quote, Impact Wrestling officials Ed Nordholm and Scott DeMore met with several high-ranking WWE executives last week at WWE headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut. PW, PWinsider.com has confirmed with several WWE sources. Vince McMahon was not involved in the meeting, we are told, but members of Triple H's team were in attendance. One WWE source described the meeting as a general discussion about the two companies and as a chance to get everyone in the same room as opposed to a specific negotiation. When contacted today by PW Insider, Impact officials declined to comment on the nature of the meetings. One Impact source specifically stressed that the meetings were not regarding the sale of either Impact Wrestling as a company or its video library, stating neither are for sale. However, Dave Meltzer mentioned this in this week's Wrestling Observer, quote, details of what was talked about are, aren't available, but we did hear that it was the Impact side that was pitching and the WWE side that was listening. Don Callis wasn't at the meeting. The belief is that it had to do with the WWE Network and the tape library. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. he quickly changed the yeah. story. Yeah, It was a meeting that WWE requested. There was said to be no substantial news out of it at this point. It was not impact pitching ideas as reported in the current issue. Mm. So this update came right after the newsletter. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, let's, let's be clear about this. Could just be as simple as let's just sit down and, and talk and just kind of say, Hey, yeah. Where are you guys at right now? You need any help? <laughs> I mean, you never know. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I mean, like the tape library thing would would have made a, a bunch of sense. Yeah, but if they're saying that's not the part of the deal, so I hate I hate not sourcing this, and I'm trying to remember where I read it, um, but I cannot. So I apologize. This this could be me pulling it out of my ass, but I'm fairly certain I read it. That even though Impact Number One is doing a very good job. I mean, it's kind of obvious they've got a Bullet Club versus Impact match coming up on the Jericho Cruise, which is great. The Young Bucks are going to be involved in that, so that's awesome. I do I do really love that I think it was Matt Jackson who, in response to Impact tweeting out, who would you like to see in the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame? It turned out to be Abyss. Um, he responded with Generation Me. So I loved that. I thought that was great. Um, but... You know, the fact that Impact is repairing relationships that had been damaged really, really, you know, badly uh, because of the, the previous regimes. Um, their relationship, they, they're in a, they are in a rela- relationship mending phase. And even though creatively they've been actually, you know, on a, on a really good tear lately, um, they're still not at the point where they're making money. Um, and so... It would stand to reason that given the WWE, uh, and, and this is for the future as well, the WWE 
Impact is bringing in the kind of talent that WWE will be looking at in the future. Um, it would not surprise me at all if OVE um, ended up in WWE in NXT a year from now. Wouldn't surprise me at all. They are killing it right now in Impact and pretty much everywhere in the independent circuit. Um, although I do wonder if Sammy would go back to the Solomon Crow name, if not the hacker gimmick. No. No, no. Re- oh, so th- you really think that? Is there a precedent for some? Is there a precedent for somebody who had a name in NXT, left, used their old name, or used a different well, name? Yeah, Cassius Ono. No, but then came back to use the name they still had in the independent circuit. That's a bit different. Uh, EC3. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. And he was Solomon Crow for such a. I mean, he was hardly on TV for. He was barely a very there. short period of time. So I would think Sammy Callahan would be the thing. I think yes. you're probably right about that. Yes. Um. I could see Moose there. I could see, uh, God, any number of the people. Uh, Tessa Blanchard's almost definitely going to be there within the next couple of years. Um, and because of that, WWE probably would love to have, this has to be all about the tape library. And I don't think for a second they're going to sell it, but yeah. they sh- damn well could license yeah, it. Yeah, and if you parse the statement, we are, we're not regarding the sale of Impact as a company or its video library, stating neither are for sale. Yeah. Did say nothing about licensing. Yeah. You know, so whether or not WWE um, would be interested in a licensing agreement, you know how they are, man. They want to own everything. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the price would be if there is a price for that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, you got to figure like you just like you said earlier, if there's a if there's a, enough zeros at the end of a paycheck, you know, say, well. We'll offer you this. No, we're good. Okay, well, 10 times that. Yeah, you here's know. another zero. Here's another we're zero good. to that. Another zero. Right? At a certain point. Yep. Because it is It is a very, it's it's a vast and very interesting tape library. And it's not just for, you know, guys like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, but so many of the guys, let's say they want to do another Sting DVD. Well, he had a huge career and impact. Yeah, yeah. You know, Samoa Joe, obviously, well, you know. Yeah, AJ, um, Bob Brood. Yeah, a lot of the, the the guys who made their names in TNA who are now in WWE, um, yeah, if WWE, WWE wants to do any sort of retrospective on their careers, they're going to need some. And more and more people are going to be Impact. going through Impact mm-hmm. to get to WWE. And why wouldn't they? You know, the same kind of thing. You know, you see Ring of Honor footage pop up here and there. I mean, that's got to be. I would assume WWE is paying some sort of licensing yeah. fee for that stuff. Yeah. And so I would think the same thing. Now I. This is complete and total ridiculous speculation, but I would doubt that it would be the impetus. But maybe the maybe the streaming game. Well, no, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I would. I, I'll put it this way: it, it seems completely likely that this has everything to do with the the tape library. That seems the most likely yeah. likely thing. If this was here's the thing. If this was New Japan and Impact meeting, I'd be like, "Okay, wow, possible talent exchange. That's interesting." Uh if it was anybody else but WWE, but it's WWE. Yeah. You know? All they really want is more tape. <laughs> All they want is more tape. They just you know? want more content for their for their network. Exactly. And Callus is like one of their head of creatives guy. He wasn't even there. Yeah. Triple H and Stephanie, they're the head of creative guys. They're not there. It's just people from their team. Yeah. So that that, that seems to be the case. Um, or the most likely case, at least. Yeah, but you know what? You know what you have to kind of appreciate. Uh, oh, by the way, by the way, I was watching Impact this week, and I had a killer idea for WCW for World Cruiserweight. Wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, You're coming well, around that idea. It's pretty good, huh? Well, my version of it. Let me hear it. Uh, well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the sa- on the Saturday show because we're actually gonna talk about Impact then. Oh, we have to. That's right. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we, we love to. We like to. That's what well, we want to do. Does. Yeah, exactly. I just sit here and listen. Moose, in a, have you seen the thumbnail of this No, episode? that's good. I like Moose <coughs> a lot. I think he's really good. In a rainbow splatter romper. That's pretty cool. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah. Moose is the best. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah, probably much. But, you know, it also speaks to, you know, Impact seems to have grownups in the room now that, you know, are probably decent to deal with as opposed yeah. to what it was before. You know, you probably get some Dixie Carter in the room and it's like, what do you want? Mm-hmm. Why would you even ask that? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Now you have Ed Nordholm, who's like, "Okay, Ed, you're not going to release these emails now, right? <laughs> you're not secretly taping us, are you, Ed?" Uh, let's talk about Cody Rhodes, former Impact superstar Cody Please, Rhodes. I love Cody Rhodes. So the latest ten pounds of gold dropped, and in it, 
Cody was asked about his impending free agency. Mm. That's what he had to say in these transcripts of courtesy of Cage Side Seats. Quote, January 1st is a very tricky day. Mm-hmm. We live in a, I guess it's taboo to talk about it, but I'm okay to talk about it. I become a free agent. And looking at how this year went with my exclusivity with Ring of Honor, how much fun I had, and how much challenge I was presented. Looking at what I did with New Japan Pro Wrestling, looking at what happened with All In, there was no way to map out last year. No way. So I feel like I'm so found, but I'm also so lost at the same time. This is the thing, he points to the 10 pounds of gold NWA title, Boom. that tethers me back to reality. I know that this moment on September 1st that I got to share with 11,000 people, become the NWA world's champion, everything right about wrestling was in that moment. So no matter where I go, whether I stay with Ring of Honor, or whether I go to WWE, Ooh. or whether I commit to New Japan Pro Wrestling for full time, or whether I just become the NWA world's champion, traveling the globe, carrying the 10 pounds of gold, taking Jack Briscoe photos everywhere. That's good. I can't map it out. It's tough, and I think the only thing I know how to do in this case is what I did last year. It's what I'm going to do this year, and that's go with my gut. Well, that's a tough situation. This dude is he is already within – when did he leave WWE? When did he get released? Two years, years ago? Three years ago? Yeah, something like that. How do you follow up what you just what he just did? You know what I mean? It'd be hard to go to WWE knowing – Odds are you're just probably going to be in the mid-card. Uh, so if he went to WWE with the group, with the elite. Oh, yeah. He'd be, it'd be and, a different scenario. And, I, I, and, and they've, they've been pretty firm. I'd be pretty stunned if whatever they did, they didn't do it together, given that they've said that so concretely. Yeah, it seems like they have a pact to do yeah. things together for the foreseeable yeah. future. This does seem a little more loose than we're all in this together and we know what our, what we're going to do next, or we actually, you know, what, whatever we're going to do, we're going to do together. This seems a bit looser than that, you know? Yeah. But how much of that is just for storyline too? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That, and that's what I figure. Um, but that being said, there's, you know, obviously some kernels of truth here and God, man, talk about, yeah. How do you follow up all in? I know like, you double like, down. That's like what he that, said. That's gotta be like, I don't know, man. If I, if I rode such a high, how do you how do you get out of that funk? You know, yeah. it's like man. Well, here's here's what, what one of the things I remember post all in the actual show and after the cameras stopped rolling after the pay per view ended, but uh, everybody was in the ring talking, and Matt was talking about hey, you know, after this we want we're I'm paraphrasing we want to do something else, but we're not ready to 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 confirm anything. We don't have any graphic, and what did Cody say? Oh, we have a graphic. Oh, did he say yeah, that? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. He seemed he seemed just as much as anybody, maybe if maybe a bit more stoked to try this all over again. Yeah. Yeah. And he was seemed like for the large part, he's one that tweeted to Melser, I'll take that bet. Yeah. He was one that wanted to go out and prove that they could do this. Mm-hmm. And I know there's gotta be an incredible high for showing that you can do it, but it's gotta be in some ways even more challenging to do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe that's the challenge they want to tackle next. Yeah. Is showing that that wasn't a flash in the pan. It wasn't a fluke thing. This is something that's sustainable. Yeah. That's probably that might actually be the harder harder thing to accomplish. Yeah, and everything I've seen with the guy, he seems to have a super level head on his shoulders. Yes. So, you know, you got to appreciate that and that I think that's kind of the probably the personality you want if you're going to keep on doing your own thing or or just figure it out. So uh so yeah, I don't know. It's it's, you know, that's all interesting stuff. I'll check out that 10 pounds of gold. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what'll definitely be interesting is how that NWA championship scene plays out. And I think we'll get a pretty good idea come what, October 21st. Is that the seventh, the anniversary show? Yeah. I think you're right about that. Whether Colt Cody retains or all this gets it back. Yeah. Because he has a, uh, he's so, is he already, he's already defended it though, right? Hasn't he? No. He has a defense against Willie Mack. Yes, in Championship Wrestling from no, in Ring of Ring Honor. Of Honor. There's a Ring of Honor TV tape. But then he showed up at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Yeah, but he didn't have a he didn't have a title defense. Right, just an appearance. Did he say anything about like coming back there though? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when's that Ring of Honor match happening? Don't remember. Sometime between now and October twenty first. It's not a uh, death before dishonor, is it? No, I thought it was a TV taping. Okay. All right. That's cool. So, yeah. I don't know. That'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Seems like, I mean, I hope I hope the dude just sort of, you know, I always appreciate it. We can talk about one of our favorite bands, Radiohead. 
how they didn't really try to follow up OK Computer with something, something that else. Sounded like OK Computer. They, they went straight into we're just gonna do whatever we yep. want to do. Well, now. I was reading a thing uh, while I was waiting for my lunch about Nirvana making uh, in utero, and that was their attitude. Mm-hmm. It was like we have we made so much money. Uh, never mind was this enormous success. Um, we pretty much have carte blanche now. Yeah. And then you combine that attitude with working with Steve Albini, mm-hmm. who does not like record companies. Mm-hmm, yeah. That was one of the things he wrote, like apparently, like a four-page uh, 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 mission statement to Nirvana, in the, which you know, saying this is what I'm going to do yeah. as your producer. And one of them is no record label executives were allowed in the studio. No, oh, that's great. They just wanted, you know, an environment where they could just create, yeah, and not worry about the business aspect of things. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's interesting when people achieve success with some relative degree of independence and you have the financial security there to know, okay, now I can take a risk, a serious mm-hmm. risk. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I, at least if it, if it fails, it's not going to, you know, like completely ruin my career. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from a financial pr- perspective. Yeah. And I would think that all of the, uh, the guys in the elite have achieved some measure of financial security where they can start taking some risks. Oh yeah. Trying new sure. things. Um, and like we saw with All In, hit a home run. Mm-hmm. So yeah. see if they can do it again. Yeah. See if they. I mean, if they if they want to do it again. I mean, there there's it's it's kind of like when Kenny talks about he would be okay with being the guy that never went to mm-hmm. like the biggest guy never mm-hmm. to go to WWE. This is a loose uh, sort of a loose analogy, but to do All In and just keep it that one magical moment that one singular moment in time when everything was perfect, why try to replicate that? Why try to make it bigger? It was perfect that one time. I wonder if there's any, I wonder if there's any uh, desire to leave it alone. Oh, I don't know. And then do something completely different, you know? Well, I, I, I go smaller. Just do a series of 500, you do know, a, do it in, 500. A, in, a, in a parking lot somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Mexico Plaza um, parking lot. I don't know. Cause if it, if it, if it, because where does it stop? You know what I mean? No, I know. Double or nothing. Let's do 20,000. Okay. Then what do you do for number three? Like at that point, where does it stop? There's something you need a stadium show essentially. Yeah. There is something very poetic about that one moment, I that perfect that. title, you know, but I, th- I think they're not content to just say, Hey, let's show what we can do. Mm-hmm. And then go back to the business as usual. Mm-hmm. You know, what is for a while what was when Kenny's catchphrase is change the world. Yeah. And I think that's, he's been pretty vocal about changing the pro wrestling landscape. Oh, this is, did she just send this? 1243. Oh yeah. Karen, our reporter on the scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cody versus Willie Mack is going to be Saturday, September 29th, which I believe is a TV taping. Okay. That's a week from tomorrow. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Death before dishonor. Television tape. Okay, week, week from week, uh, week from tomorrow. Cool. Um, and so I guess in my mind, all in was if that's their intention, mm-hmm. then all in was kind of the the kickstart of all that. It, that could be. That totally could be. That totally could be. Oh, hey, we got a stream lab. Oh wow. Let's see who's this most wanted. Said here's some pocket change. I hope you guys get a chance to review the Marine Six. We're working. We're on working it. on. Oh, that. We actually have several people. <laughs> out there working. We're trying to make something happen. Something we're very trying to special. Make something happen, and it would be very, very special. Yeah, it would be pretty cool. Yeah, we're we got a link down in the description if you want to kick in at Streamlabs, and and I get a little alert, alert here. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, let's talk about in our last news story. One of the competitors at All In, Ray Mysterio Jr. So Wolverine. Yeah, that was a great outfit he had. That was awesome. Um, so earlier this week, we heard that he had officially signed a two-year deal with WWE which apparently has an opt-out after 18 months. Oh, interesting. So we can opt out six months early. You can say adios, yeah. muchachos. Um, and uh, there's an exclusive story from Ringside News, mm. um, which states that not only will Ray have his return match at WWE Crown Jewel in mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia, but that his opponent could be one United States champion. Oh, wow. Shinsuke Nakamura. Instant dream matchup right there. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's really great. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Boy, if we were to come to pass. Talk about a friggin' like it's it's I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to take Rey Mysterio for granted now. He's old. 
um, or older. He's like our age. Yeah, he's in his 40s. Um, but given what he can do in the ring. Still. Yeah, yeah. still. Um, I'm going to treat every match like it's his last one. And I hope WWE does as well. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, give the, just dole out some dream matches. Cien Almas. We ever get yes. Rey Mysterio versus La Sombra? You see Chelsea Green debuted at Lucha Underground? Yeah, that was great. Oh, was She's awesome. with uh, Mari the Moth, right? Oh, is that what it is? Okay. I thought, so. I thought okay. I saw that. I, saw, I thought I saw still him with her over his shoulder. But could be I wrong. just saw the Destroyer. She yeah, man. Out. Oh, she's the best. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. Anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting back to... Started thinking about Ray. I started thinking about Lucha Underground. Um, dude, yeah, but come on. Ray versus AJ. Ray versus Daniel Bryan. Ray versus blah, 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 blah. Everybody we just listed in the HBK Yeah, pretty much. One. Pretty much. So, yeah, that'll be cool. But that's great. That for a first time, man, Shinsuke's got to be jacked about that. He's got to be excited about that if, if that's the case. Yeah, I know. So, and that'd be awesome. That's really cool. All right. Question time. Question time. R O N P 0523. Hey, guys. Long time fan. First time in a long time. Be able to see a live stream. Thanks for keeping me entertained during those long overnight drives. Brima. Would you, you know, I got, hey, speaking of which, I got a, a tweet from somebody saying, I use your podcast to fall asleep. And now when Larson does that, it wakes me up in a shock terror. So maybe you should think about our audience before you start saying that Bree mode garbage. I apologize for the inconvenience. However, however, you got to kill it now, man. No, I don't know. If I'm You're change. waking people out. From I, their I, apologize. I apologize. I these, apologize. These wrestle, these, uh, friendos out there. I apologize. However, however, what is that? Uh, Dylan, what criteria is required to wear a band T-shirt? Just like on one of their CDs and yeah. listen to it. Yeah, so here, here, here it is. That's really here it. I actually is. appreciate their no, music. No, don't own, own one of their CDs. What is this, 1996? Oh, sorry. sorry. Have a playlist. Have some basic knowledge of their oeuvre. Here, here, here's the criteria. If somebody walks by and see, oh, you got a Rainmaker shirt. That's cool. They say, hey. Rainmaker, or oh man, Okada. Yeah. Then you're supposed to say, yeah, Rainmaker. Yeah, he's the best. What would what you prefer, uh, pre balloon Okada or current no, it Okada? It doesn't even have to go that deep. Doesn't have to go that deep. Just I know who he is and I appreciate the work. That's all it is. I have a tool, so I never wear it because it's oddly fitting on me. Like the the arms are super tight, but then the midsection is like way blown out. I'm That's like, weird. Who is this made for? Somebody with really tiny arms, but then like really, really Strange. big in the midsection. It's really Strange. weird. Strange. So I don't wear it, but it's a great design. And it's like also like super white. So like it would just blow out the screen anyways. Yeah. Um, but the design is really cool. So yeah, and that would make, that's what me and Shana were talking about. If somebody walks by and says, hey, Tool. Yeah, I appreciate them. You appreciate them. We're on the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're part the of the same. club. Yeah, no, yeah, I have a part of the club. I that part. Yeah, exactly. But you also have to be prepared that if someone wants to engage in a longer conversation, you know what you're talking about to a certain degree. No, you don't. No, you yes, don't. you do. No, you don't. Why? Why? A longer conversation because about you, the minutia of their stuff? Not by the minutia. About, yeah. Like, like say if someone, like I'm wearing a Radiohead shirt and someone says, oh, Radiohead, have you ever seen him live? I can say, yes, here, 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 here. It was great. Right. Saw him tour before they you're released in Rainbows. You're, you're just saying too much. I got to get to my bus, dude. I got to get to my bus. Well, you're I the didn't one know in, I was going to get into a conversation. Well, there. I just proved my bona fides. I, didn't, I wasn't looking for your bona fides. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, Tool. Oh, man, I love them. Have you ever seen them live? No, nah, but I've always wanted to. Cool. But then they might say, oh, I have. They played like for three hours. They played all of uh, their first album. Yeah. You know, and they did like a 10 minute version of that's of, great. I gotta catch my bus. sober. I gotta catch you my You gotta bus. be prepared for that, though. I, no, I you why? do. Why? I don't have to be because prepared for it could happen. <laughs> you might get trapped in that guy and they put their arm in your shoulder. Yes, you're stuck in a conversation. Grim Morning Star, not sure why Steve's arm on Kyle O'Reilly's shoulder is a big deal or seen as awkward. I think it shows that the guys are normal and not above their fans. <laughs> I, I completely and totally agree. Also, people like, so Kyle put out a tweet saying, uh, it's silly that people are mad about the lack of a guitar entrance. It's just cool being in the game. It's just cool being in the game. And some people were like aiming that at me or something because that was in the interview. And I just felt... I was just giving the dude a platform to respond to that, which yeah. is a which was like something that a lot of people were talking about. And even when you asked him about, that's pretty much exactly what he said. Yeah, is that we're just you know what right? Yeah, exactly. The animation yeah. is whatever. It's you're in, we're in the game, and that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dylan, hey Larson, what brand are your metallic gold shoes? They're Nike, Nike Air Max Zeros. Mm -hmm. They're not so metallic shiny anymore because they're dirty. I need to wash them. Super kicking it with Kelsey, friendo of the show. Yeah. Which five wrestlers would you choose to be in a wrestling boy band? Who do we know can sing? HBK, 
Yeah. He's in a boy band. Yeah. We'll put him in a boy band. Yeah. Uh, Brian Zane. He carried a tune. Oh man, he was he, yeah. He really did a good job in that. Uh, if you only knew if video. If you only knew video. Yeah, he, he hit that high note pretty well. Yeah. So there's two. I was really, I was really impressed. Uh, who else sings their own theme song? I know I'm thinking of this. Uh... Someone now sings their own theme. Yeah. Song. Why am I drawing a blank? Who sings their own theme song now? Come on, we know this. I know. I can't think though. Who's over there on Raw, on SmackDown? AJ and Shinsuke. I'm not drawing a blank. Own, who sings their own song? Totally drawing a blank here. All right, people, help us out. Who sings yeah, who their sings own? their own theme song? Damn. Does it's does Leo Rush sing his own? Is it his own? No, 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 no. 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 Did, didn't he? I thought he came out with a rap song. He did. Right? Okay. Well, Leo, we I'll put Leo, Leo Rush in there. Right, all right. Leo Rush. Um. Oh, uh, what's his face? That dude I can't say. Mark Andrews. Oh yeah, this is the worst. He sings. That's his voice That's on that song. Worst. It's not the worst. It was the worst. Uh, and then we need one more. Uh, Papa Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Young, yay or nay? Christmas bucket of popcorn, the tin, the popcorn tin, yay or nay? So the popcorn usually isn't quality in no, that. No, it's not good. However, it's a hard nay for me. <laughs> it's a hard, a hard nay. I really don't like popcorn that much, anyways. Yeah. It's a hard. Oh, our truth. Yeah, there Aiden, you go. Aiden and our truth. Yes, 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 okay, yes. There, you, there go. you go. Oh yeah, Marty had that thing. Oh, Joe Hendry. How do we not say? Joe oh, Hendry? Joe Hendry. Yeah. So hard no on a uh, popcorn tin for me, Steve. What do you think? I. I you love I, popcorn. Yeah, dude. I think I'm a hard no, though. Yeah. I think I'm a hard, a hard no. I, I need some quality, and even some movie theaters are garbage. Yeah. Nothing like good popcorn, though, man. I'm telling you. There's a lot of things better than good popcorn. Um, I'm Austin Renz. Asks Steve, if you could rest your hand on the wrestler's on any wrestler's shoulder, who would it be and why? I've already peaked. It's Kyle O'Reilly because he didn't like put me in a submission. Yeah, he should have put you in a in a Kimura right there. <laughs> Josh Little, who would be the Avengers of pro wrestling? Pick uh, five men wrestlers and and two female wrestlers. Oh, is Tyler Breeze? Is does he did he do his yeah, own? Yeah. yeah, okay, Tyler Breeze. Alex C says Bree. Oh, Braun can probably sing. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh Elias. Oh John Cena. Oh my God, Elias! So many, so yeah. many, so many talented individuals. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Uh, five male wrestlers, two female wrestlers create wrestling's Avengers. Captain America is John Cena. Yeah. Uh, Thor, Braun. Oh, no, Thor is Hulk. I'm sorry. Braun, Braun is, is Hulk. Hulk. Thor is is powerful, but also personal. I'd say like more Roman is probably more Thor. If they let Roman chill out a little bit. Right, chill Roman. Chill Roman's like Thor. Whose vision? That's all that really matters. Whose vision? We need Iron Man. Seth Rollins is Iron Man. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I think he's actually worn that suit before. Yeah, he has. Okay. Who's Vision? I don't know. Drew Gulak is Vision. <laughs> <laughs> you need somebody who's dispassionate. Yeah, no. Okay. Alistair Black is more oh, Vision than anybody. There you go. And then we need uh, two women wrestlers. Mm. For uh, Black Widow mm-hmm. and Scarlet Witch. Um, Becky is Black Widow. Yeah, I guess. But she has like red hair. Scarlet Witch. Uh, Black she Widow. Did. She's sometimes. Yeah, she's she did like, one of the movies. Now. All right, Becky is Scarlet Witch then. And then, uh, I don't know, Peyton Rice is the other one. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> David Porter taking out Undisputed Era. What WWE wrestlers would you want to, would you want to complete GTA heists with? Well, Xavier, New Day. New Day. Yeah, the New Day. Yeah. Yeah, and it's four. Yeah. So you and those guys. Yeah. Okay, that works. Uh, Dylan, do you think HBK will come back again for WrestleMania? One match at a time. Uh, yeah, one match at a time for sure. But that would not, if, if he's happy with Crown Jewel, he'll, he'll we're, we're getting one. AJ HBK at Mania. That'll yeah, happen. That'll happen. Uh, uh, Mr. Triple Mania himself, Juan Guerrero uh-huh. Jr., Steve, can you have a conversation? This is for both of us. Can you have a conversation? Wait, do you do Dr. Wagner Jr.? 
No. Okay. He says, can you have a conversation where Dr. Wagner Jr. explains triple mania to The Undertaker? It's the most insane wrestling you will ever, ever see in your life. I don't know, Dr. Wagner Jr. One time I wrestled a man named John Gonzalez who was naked. He had super thick bush. His little bell end had me wishing I was in the depths of hell. I thought that was a fake suit. Oh, yeah. Michelle, get your Lady Jim out of my tools. Comes back to Lady Jim. Mr. Unforgettable. Jesse Ventura was in the original Predator along with a bunch of Jack dudes. <laughs> it's true. And Shane Black, who was not jacked in that movie. Isn't that weird? The nerd in that movie ended up being like a big director oh, guy. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that was Shane Black. He's doing the new Predator movie, too. Yeah, yeah, he did. Cast wrestlers that should have been in the new Predator movie. Who will be the lone survivor? Uh, who will be the lone survivor against Predator? Who's the Arnold of today? Well, it's John Cena, man. Yeah, that makes sense. John Cena. He'd Boy, be the lone survivor. What, they need to spend some of that TV money and get in the Predator rights. I know. License. John Cena, Drew McIntyre. Oh. Oh, oh. oh that'd be great. Uh, and then Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak. He could be the Shane Black character. Seth Rollins. <laughs> oh, man, that's killer. Oh, Killer team. And then... Miz, Shawn Michaels, and Becky Lynch there all reprise their characters from, from the Marine, Marine Six. Six. There you go. This is this is my favorite tweet maybe of the month because this is so perfect. Future Pirate King Monkey D. Luffy. You know how WWE likes to use social media to progress storylines oh, yeah. sometimes? Wouldn't it be funny if Aleister Black revealed who his attacker was on Twitter out of the blue? That is so perfect because they totally do that kind of start shit. Start subtweeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Mr. Dope, which Gatorade is better? Red, blue, or yellow? Red. It's dude. It's either orange or yellow. It's, it's orange. Those are the both. Those are the two OG. I think orange is OG, isn't it? That's like the original Gatorade. Oh, I thought the the lime green one. Was. Oh, was it? Yeah. It's either orange or lime green. It, it's th- orange. There's no wrong answer with those two. It's orange. But once you start getting into the blue and the red and the green, no, nah, man. Red's not terrible. I used to drink the red. Come on. Orange is best. It's, dude, it's either orange it's or orange. lime green. We got another one here, $2, that was retracted. Thank you, retracted. Sean Lathrop, who will be the bigger star, Velveteen Dream dude. or Peter Dune? That's a tough one. So I think Velveteen Dream has more potential if used correctly, but Peter Dune is the safer bet. I'd say that. I'd put more money on Peter Dune. Yeah, I can see that. Because I think he's a safe, super safe bet. Uh, Packers 101, do you know the reason why Champa, Cross, Kendrick, and Murphy aren't in 2K19? I do not. Uh, from what I understand, the wrestlers themselves can opt not to be in the game. Um, beyond that, it's up to the WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Champa said that he didn't want to be in it. In character, he said that. See, that would actually make all the sense in the world. It I'm would. not sure why Nikki Cross, Brian Kendrick. I mean, he's not he's not much of a featured player anymore. Yeah. Um, Buddy Murphy's ascent, I guess, was recent enough to be in the game, but I, so I don't know why that would be. Um, Nikki Cross, that's that's a head scratcher because she was in last year's game. That's a that's well, they both yeah, they both were. But Chompa makes sense. Yeah, Nikki Cross that doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't, I don't get know. It. It's weird. Uh, Tn one C should Kyrie lose a title at War Games to Bianca and Bianca loses at Brooklyn Five to Io Shirai, or Kyrie beats Bianca and Kyrie loses to a heel Io Shirai. I I kind of think Shayna might pick it back up. It's entirely possible at the next uh, takeover. Yeah. Yeah. Or evolution. That's happening. Evolution, yeah. Spoiler alert. What? I think that happened. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Well, the match didn't happen. The okay. match didn't Yeah, the match, match didn't happen. It's, just, it's happening in evolution. Um, uh, Timmy Two Dope. Let's say they both debut the Raw SmackDown after Mania. Fantasy book Velveteen Dream and Keith Lee from debut to next year's Mania. Jeez, that's a long time. All right, Dream goes to SmackDown. Keith Lee goes to Raw. Okay. Um, they'll probably instantly turn Keith Lee heel. <laughs> right. The nicest, gentlest guy this side of Cassius Ono. They're going to turn him heel. They're, yeah, they'd probably do something silly like that. 
Um, they'll feed him the Roman Reigns. I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna if it's gonna take them a while to get Velveteen Dream right. It's probably gonna take him getting released. Uh, Zach Stolpa learned today that my school is anti Bullet Club merch. Can't wear Bullet Club merch. It's not surprising. It's got the word bullet on it. It's man. got guns on it. Nothing. Shit goes down to those schools, man. You don't need people walking around with bullets. John on. Baylor Jr. Ashley only like Bree's entrance for Bree mode. You kill it every time, Larson, so thanks. See, even when you do it to that degree, it makes me shudder. So you don't have to scream it anymore. Uh, How asks, if you had to choose one WWE guy to be immediately released and go to the indies to rebuild his brand, I'm assuming we can't choose Neville because it's probably already happening. Maybe. Um, Who would it be and why? Who would you say, go to the indies and rebuild your brand? Who's in the loser's locker room? I wouldn't say that to Kurt. I wouldn't say that to uh, maybe Bo Dallas. Yeah, that's a good answer. Maybe Bo Dallas. Good answer. I'd be interested. I think there's so much potential in that dude. Yeah. And I would love to see what he would do somewhere else. Um, Maybe he'd do a whole lot of nothing. Maybe he'd do a whole lot of something. I don't know. Where do you think he would go? Because that dude could put on some good matches. Uh, Ring of Honor. He feels like a Ring of Honor guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, feels like a Ring of Honor guy. Uh, Power Packers 90, Aiden and Marty and Buff Bagwell, I guess, for the singers. Aiden's a good singer. Did Buff Marty's Bagwell sing? I don't remember Buff Bagwell singing. Oh, Sean Lathrop uh, asking the same question again. Higher ceiling, Pete Dunn, Velveteen Dream. I think Velveteen Dream probably has a higher ceiling, but like I said, Pete, Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn's more of a sure bet. Yeah. Tommy Cat, Chris Hero is my hero. Dude seems so cool. Man, seriously. Completely and totally. Josh Little, wrestlers to be in a buddy cop movie. He suggests Finn and Braun. It's a good pick. That's a good pick. We've had this question before. Uh, a buddy, what is it, a buddy cop movie? Yeah. I would actually go with Elias and... Oh, no. Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley. Yeah, but you want both guys to carry their weight. And I'm not sure Bobby would be great, but Elias and Leo Rush could be... Oh, no. You know what I would go with? Ooh, how about this? Leo Rush and Kevin Owens. Mm. That's the buddy. Because talk about opposites. Yeah. Uh, Jay Sean Lawrence attending... Oklahoma next week where I get a chance to meet Chavo, Johnny Mundo, JR, most importantly, the GOAT himself, Scott Steiner. Oh, those are all great Amazing. Names. That is incredible. He, you're, you're probably going to be surprised by how, by how gentle Scott Steiner is. Yeah, he's super mellow is. these days. Everybody was saying that he's like super mellow. Dude just knows how to cut promos. Yep. Anyway, is that it for show? That's it for show. All right, patrons, stay tuned. The $5 and up a month mark on Patreon. You can get on right now and check out our post show. It goes live in about five to ten minutes. So, patrons, stick around for that. And uh, until next time, we'll talk to you guys. Well, let's get some the Elden, get music. some music. Thought you were gonna do that. You were gonna do the music. I thought you needed to do that. You didn't know it. You didn't know how to do it. You didn't know it. You didn't know. There's music. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.